All right, hello. Uh, welcome to this session. Um, my name is Patrick. Um, I work for Red Hat. So this session uh, is probably a little bit different from the um, other OpenStack sessions. Um, it's not about a particular product in OpenStack. It's more about how, how do we help to grow the OpenStack community. And um, in that, um, how Sonata is being used to um, to help the translation process in OpenStack. Um, and Sonata is a product developed by Red Hat. Um, it's used by OpenStack and also a few other communities. Um, this is just a different color um, for Sonata. So um, before we start, um, what's internationalization? Um, that's the, oops. It's blinking. Um, right. It's running on batteries or? Yeah, running on batteries. Uh, you need a power supply for it? Yeah. Okay, let's plug that in. Yeah. Just That's better. Um, sorry about the disruption. So uh, international, internationalization, by definition, is like that. It's very long. But in a nutshell, it's basically just um, you provide translation into a different languages so that it can reach broader audiences. Um, why is it important? Because in some markets, like Japan and China, um, Maybe it's not banned by law, but if you don't have a, a localized copy, uh, it's very hard to get into the market. Um, here, we uh, just briefly go through some internationalization or uh, INTN workflows. Um, there are some tools involved. Um, so now that is one of them. It's the translation management platform. Um, and also Jenkins is also used to automate some of the processes. So um, I will um, later demonstrate how it helps to make it streamlined. And besides that, uh, there are a series of scripts developed by the um, OpenStack Infra team um, to make it easier. And it is scheduled to run um, daily to synchronize between um, Sonata server and your, if your project is uh, hosted it by OpenStack Infra, um, that's between them. Um, so this diagram shows the basic workflow of how uh, translation works or international, internationalization works. Um, suppose you are a software owner or content author. You do your work in a, a Git repository. So that's on the left-hand side. Uh, you start your work, and after a while, um, your work is um, ready to, to be published, then um, the, the third, third one on the left. So at that point, you might want to start pushing your 
translatable contents into Zanata. Um, right now it's done by Jenkins via some scripts. Uh, once the strings are pushed into Zanata, um, translator on the right hand side can go in and start doing their work. Um, uh, this is, goes into a cycle, so um, if the translation is finished or it is, um, the bulk of work is finished, then now it's time to pull down the translation into your, back into your Git repository, and then um, you can build it and verify that it works, uh, nothing breaks, and also the translator can go on to, the, to, to see the final product and verify the translation looks good. Um, once everyone is happy, then you can ship it and release your, your product or documentation. Um, yeah, this is um, for OpenStack. Um, there are some policies around translations. Um, normally, translation files are only included if it's properly translated over uh, a percentage. Right now, it's 75%. Um, if you go to some websites or software, um, you might see some partial translated uh, UI. Um, that's because it's not always 100% translated. If there's no translation, it just fall back to English uh, most of the time. And for that reason, it doesn't make sense to include a, include a poorly translated um, files. And also, there's a policy to remove any translation that's below 40%. Because as time grows, um, when you release new software, uh, you may add new, more strings, and the previous um, translation rate will go down. And if it's too low, then it will get removed. Um, translation patches will be it's reviewable in Gira, so you can structurally review it, um, not to verify the quality of the translation because. Probably only the translator understand that language. Uh, you, you can, as a software owner, you can verify it, it looks okay. It doesn't break your software. Um, I will talk about the validation um, rules Sonata runs um, in the following slides. Um, all of these are in the documentation, the wiki page on uh, IN10 team. So if you have a software project, you want to enable um, localization or internationalization, um, the, the link uh, has a very good documentation for how to do that. So in a nutshell, uh, first off, you need to de decide what type of your project is, um, whether it's Django or Python or ReactJS or any custom projects. That de determines what type of the files um, you need to be uh, pushing to Zanata and how you how you can do that. Um, you need to find a way to mark what, what strings can be translated. Um, based on your project type, there, there are instructions on how to do that. And once you follow the instructions, um, you should be good to go. Um, there are a lot of scripts to help with that as well. Um, next on, um, I will cover some, some of the features if you are uh, project owner or uh, either a software owner or, or a content author, what Sonata features you might be interested to know. Um, uh, I will cover it one by one. So first off, um, in Sonata, we have a concept of project and versions. That's very much like um, what's in Git. So a project normally corresponds to a Git repository and the versions corresponds to your software versions or Git branches. Um, so you can have a project and you can have multiple versions in it. Um, this is the web UI for, for how it looks in Zanata. Um, you can see the statistics of the translation um, in the green, green bar underneath the version. Um, if you look at the tabs on the, the third one, it's called Glossary. This is a new feature in Zanata 4.x. So now you can define project level glossaries. Um, glossary will help to maintain accuracy of the translation as well as uh, consistency. So you don't 
um, you always do the same translation, always use the same tra translation for certain terms. Um, there's also a global one um, you can use. It's shared across different projects. This is uh, for a particular project. Um, back to the project page, you have a lot of settings. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see different tabs. Um, I won't be able to cover all of them, just to mention the important ones. Um, there you can define the languages, um, which languages you want your project to be translated into. You can customize that. And um, this page shows the web pool. Um, again, this is new in Sonata 4.x. Um, just by the way, right now, the OpenStack Sonata instance is running on 3.9.6. So um, we are planning to do an upgrade. So you, you should be able to see this very soon. Um, for webhook, um, it is just like any other webhook. It is a way to um, integrate with other systems. For example, to integrate with Jenkins to do a build automatically when um, certain event happens. Um, this is the settings for validation. Um, as I mentioned, translation, because you, you commit your translation files into your Git repository, so potentially it might break things. Um, how to um, avoid some common errors, this is what validation is for. Um, uh, I'll just, for example, uh, the print, printf variables, if you uh, are familiar with um, some programming languages, you know that um, that's like a string interpolation. You have some placeholders in your strings. Um, that's, that would be substituted with, with some runtime values. Um, if, for, for example, the translation forget to include a placeholder, that will break your code, and that, that's not something you want. So we have a bunch of uh, different validations. Um, you can choose to either turn it off, that means uh, it's not ac ac applicable to your project, or if you can set it to a warning, that means if you fail the, translation, uh, the validation, in the editor it will show as a warning, uh, but you can still save it. If you set it to error, that means if you fail the validation rules, you won't be able to save it. So pick and choose which one is more suitable for, for your project. Um, this is the version page. So uh, if you look, if you can see the um, top left, it shows which project it belongs to. And this version is called master. Um, it shows some statistics. So it also have a settings page. It's very similar to the project ones. And by default, it just inherits what's in the project. So for your project, you, you normally only need to define those settings once, um, unless you want to customize it for a particular version. Um, here, I opened up the drop-down menus to show some common actions. Uh, most of the actions are very useful for project maintainers. Um, they are mainly to, to help to reuse translations. Um, that's a very important feature Sonata provides. You don't want to repeat translating the same string over and over again. So um, it's better to reuse previous strings. Um, like I said, the version in Sonata is very much like uh, branches in Git. So when you create a branch in Git, you, not, you, you base your branch off an uh, old branch, so you don't start from scratch. Similarly, when you create a version in Sonata, you shouldn't start from scratch, if you can. So it, when you create a version, a new version, it, it asks you to whether or not you want to base it off an uh, existing version so that it will bring across the previous strings. And then uh, when you push the new strings into Sonata, it is smart enough to figure out what's added, what's removed, and what's, what has been changed to um, as much as possible to reuse previous translation. So um, there are a lot of the options. Uh, they might seem a little bit confusing because there are a lot of them. And 
they are, um, due to historical reasons, they are a little bit overlapping in functionality. Um, but uh, the most important one uh, is probably um, you create a version based off existing version. And also, um, I want to talk about a new feature in 4.x, surround 4.x, to um, reuse translation memory from across the side. Um, so here, if you can see the drop down from the, the third one is called TM merge translation. That's once you click that, it will bring up this pop up. What that means is for um, first off, TN uh, is short for translation memory. Um, what that means is I want to use whatever translation memory available as long as it matches my strings, I want to use that. Um, this is uh, this one is very similar to the other ones, but this one has some added new things there. Uh, for one, it can choose which project or which source you want the TM to, to be copied from. Um, there are some more finer grain controls, like you can select, I just want to copy the translation memory from this particular project, or I don't care which project it's from, I, I copy it from everywhere. Or you can pick pick and choose uh, some particular project and versions and even prioritize which one should, should, should come first. Um, that's, that's very important because um, even the string is the same, but under different contexts, it, it might mean completely different thing. Uh, for example, networking. Uh, in computer science, it means um, the computer network, but in social network, that's completely different. So you can, you can uh, pick and choose. Um, here is the editor. So once you, uh, this is mainly for translators. So once you sign up with uh, open ID, uh, OpenStack ID, um, you, you, sh you will be able to sign in into Zanata. Zanata supports open ID. Um, once you join a, choose to join a language team, you should be able to, uh, you, you will have the permission to translate um, the, the projects there. So the online editor, um, just want to point out, um, Sonata, to, to help um, make the translation process easier, Sonata is designed to support concurrent editing. And that's very important for open source projects. Um, because open source projects normally have uh, distributed contributions. Um, contributors may come from different geolocations and time zones. They may work on the same thing um, at the same time. So on the right hand side, if you expand that, uh, the right hand uh, icons, you can see how many people are currently working on this project um, as a way to um, visualize um, just like Google Doc, um, if multiple person are editing the same document, uh, it's a way to see. And also if you look at the first row, there's a tiny name, it's in gray, it's a little bit hard to see. Um, on top of that, that means um, the other person is actually editing the same row as you. If you focus on a different row, then it won't show that uh, name tag and only if both persons are on the same row, it will show the, the other person. That's uh, another way to avoid um, conflict and also avoiding clobber other, other people's work. Um, on the last row, you can see there's a yellow bar underneath the translation uh, text area. Um, it shows warnings. Um, that's what the validation rules is for. Uh, in this particular case, um, because the on the left hand side is the source string. It has a lot of the XML tags in it, but on the right hand side, it doesn't have the tags, so it shows as a warning. And the left hand side, uh, the, the bottom left is the translation memory. So every time you save a translation, we index it, and um, so it's available for reuse. It, it also because we index it, so it's available for some fuzzy match matchings, just like Google uh, search, but maybe not as, not as smart as Google search. Um, we try our best to, to support that. 
And the right hand side is the glossary. Um, if you have any glossary available, it will show up as well. Um, this is the page when um, an actual concurrent editing happens. So you will see um, on the screen, it will do a pop-up saying somebody else also edit this row and save before you. You won't lose your work. It, it will still show, show your work in the, the, the first row. Um, so you can choose to save it elsewhere. And if you think your translation is better than the other person's, then you can also override his work uh, later on. Um, this doesn't only happen when two persons are editing the same thing. It also may happen if you are trying to translate something online and another person kick off the, the bulk, um, like TM merge uh, in previous screen, a bulk operation to preview a lot of translations. It, it will also show this screen so that you, you don't you won't lose your work, basically. And that's very important for uh, open source projects. Um, all right, so let's talk about how we, how we can do continuous integration. And as you can see, translation work is mostly done by human. And to, to uh, make it more efficient to bring the INTN process into your project play, um, we want to automate as much as possible. Um, how do we do that? Uh, in OpenStack, um, there's, OpenStack uses Jenkins to do the uh, automatically building and uh, pulling, pushing source files to Zanata and pulling translation files down to your Git repository. Um, it uses a lot of the scripts. Um, here, I would like to introduce a new tool we developed. Um, we actually develop a Jenkins plugin. So now, you, if you don't want to write scripts, you can use um, the plugin. It's available um, in Jenkins. Um, you can install it. So what it brings is, once you install the Sonata plugin, you will be able to, uh, on the Jenkins tools configuration page, you will be able to install uh, Sonata CLI tools. Right now, I think OpenStack Infra team is managed that by Puppet or something to make sure it's available. It's installed on the, uh, the Jenkins nodes. Um, this way, you, you, you let Jenkins handle that automatically. installs either on the slave or on the master. And you can choose which version to use. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier. So um, also, it will add. Um, yeah, after you install it globally, you, you'll be able to add that installation on your, on your job. Um, and also, once you install the plugin, your job, your Jenkins job, will be able to uh, accept Sonata webhook. Um, that's, um, you can already trigger Jenkins job by tokens, but this one, um, it understands the Zanata webhook, so it, it can add more functionality to that. For example, it, it can interpret the payload to know which language to, to actually build, uh, rather than building the entire language set. Um, and this is the build step it adds to it. Um, if you just want to do simple push and push, um, you don't need to do any scripting. You just uh, check the chat boxes and pick your credentials and a few more settings. The way you go, you, you don't even install anything. Um, but you can also choose to script it the way you want if you want more customization because this is uh, this only supports a subset of the options Sonata CLI supports. So if you want more control or more customization, then you can still use Sonata CLI for that. Um, with the Jenkins job and the script, with all that set up, then the, if you look back to the previous workflow page, um, you can see all the green boxes can be automated. So that should just be a one-off setup. Once you set it up as a software owner or content author, you don't need to worry about any of the translation stuff. 
all you care is you, you, you continue with your development, you commit your file into Git, and that's it. Jenkins takes care from there. And for translators, um, you also need, don't need to worry about uh, repository and how to build a software and anything like that. You just be focusing on Sonata, you just do your translation, and both parties are transparent to each other. And that's the happy ending. Um, we won't have time for, for demo, I think. And I pretty much just talked through the, the demo. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, any questions? Um, not a lot of people for this session. Yeah, if you have any projects, uh, even outside of OpenStack, if you are interested in um, internationalization, you can use another tool and use the Jenkins plugin to make it easier. Just yeah. close it then, yeah. Hmm? Just close it then. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, that's the end of it. Thank you.